coming up in this episode. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Hopefully the weather will be better than this. It's got a red light. Yeah. Options sailed across the English Channel from Ransgate to France, avoiding the shipwrecking Goodwin Sands and following the voyage of the little ships made in 1940. On arrival, a radio call brought assistance to the pontoon and Isabel directed us to our berth, which we'd booked for three nights. The arrival in France was a significant moment in our long way down journey to the Med and after sailing more than 640 nautical miles from home, we'd made it safely to Dunkirk. So that evening, we celebrated in style. The next three days were spent transforming options from sailboat to canal boat and preparing the mast and sails for storage. Removing the mast is a time-consuming process and working between rain showers, it took a few hours to get it ready. First, we dropped the Genoa from the roller furler, which is relatively easy. For the mainsail, first remove the reefing lines, then I find it easier to remove the battens before unclipping the sail from the mast. Untie the tack and tow, then draw the sail forward out of the boom slot. Now with sails removed, next cut away the protective tape from the bottle screws and then remove the split pins. Last of all, we removed the boom to rest on deck overnight. The boatyard had confirmed that the mast lift would be 2pm the next day. In the morning, we walked a couple of miles through Dunkirk to find the VNF office. Here, they recorded our personal and boat details for the vignette. On our way back to the marina, we had a late breakfast in a wonderful patisserie while checking through the new VNF information. Unstepping the mast is a nerve-wracking process and you can only hope that the professional operating the crane is time served, competent and safe. Julian literally just shimmied up that like a monkey. Dropping a long heavy pole from a sky hook through the deck of your boat isn't helpful. Let's go a bit higher so we'll have to wait and see. Back home in Hull there were three technicians engaged in removing and later replacing the mast for the boat renovations. Here in Dunkirk, there was just Julian, who Sheena called the mast monkey. I had the bosun's chair ready, but Julian just clambered up the mast and made it look so easy. He went about his work methodically, quietly and in control, directing help from me only when he needed it. Uh-oh, here we go. Over there. Well, that was interesting. We took options back to the marina and then walked to the boatyard. Our next task was to dismantle the mast parts and make ready for storage, but we ran out of time because the yard closed. So we had a night out in the town. After laundry chores, Sheena joined me in the boatyard to complete mass dismantling and wrapping in slightly wet conditions. With the mast hopefully secured, prepared for transport, all the bits and pieces fastened on. The 
next time we see it, to dismantle it and put it back together, we'll be in the south of France in the Mediterranean Sea! Yay! Yay! <laughs> and hopefully the weather will be better than this. <laughs> Anyway, it's getting cold now. We didn't have bags for the sales and located the local voilerie, which is owned and managed by celebrated Dunkirk-born sailor, Joe Seaton. He gladly took my order to make two sail bags for collection the next day. In the afternoon, we visited the Operation Dynamo Museum and walked the beaches where the little ships helped to rescue so many Allied soldiers in 1940. Check out episode six to find out more about our thoughts on this epic World War II event. There's a 1920s English built paddle steamer moored in a basin near the center of Dunkirk. The Princess Elizabeth took part in Operation Dynamo, evacuating 1,673 soldiers from the beaches. After a varied life, she sailed back to Dunkirk in 1999 to be a living museum and restaurant. So this was our venue for dinner that evening. I finalised the storage details with Olivier at Blue Marine. It's a one-man band is Julian. I don't know how we're going to get across the road. It's going to be very interesting. I wanted to make sure it was in the yard before we left. And Sheena helped Julian move the mast into their yard. For eventual collection and onward transport. This is madness. Thinking about what the guys that killed Dale did. <laughs> killed Dale. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna try and cross the road. To meet us in southern France. After collecting the new bags from Joe, we packed the sails and barrowed them to be stored inside at Blue Marine. At last we were ready to head off into the canals, but a clues Tristram is opened only twice a day due to road traffic, and because we missed the morning bridge lift, we had to wait for the 4pm slot, and then moor up again in another dock. one lock and three bridges. We tied up overnight in the Port de Bassin de la Marine, not far from the Princess Elizabeth paddle steamer. This is it. After nearly two years of searching, renovating, planning and preparing for this adventure, we were about to enter the inland waterways of France. With mast removed and keel up, we were ready, but unfortunately wet. The starboard aft cleat had leaked rain onto our bed overnight and soaked the new mattress. It seems there's always something to repair on a boat. After fighting with the sealant gun, Still got a red light. I radioed our request for the bridge to lift, slipped lines and negotiated our first automatic lock. It doesn't empty very quickly. <laughs> That's all right. The whole day? <laughs> Mm. Gone down, oh, it definitely gone down about a meter because the water was uh, the water was inside of that mm. chain hook there. No English writing there. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> Eclus Magasin General spills out into the eastern section of the Canal de Bourbourg. Here we go. <clears throat> Clearance under the bridge. So the next lock is um, Eclus Jus de Mail. We clear it front. Building this waterway started in 1679 to join the port with the River Anne. The longest lock at 110 metres and 12 metres wide on this short canal yep. section 
is Ecluse de Jus de Mel. The maximum authorised draft in Dunkirk and the eastern section of the Bourbourg is 2.2 metres. Plenty of depth for our swing keeled boat. I guess we're going to see quite a lot of this. It looks like abandoned barges. Lift. Here we go. Lift. Yeah. Is that lifting? There we go. That's changed to green and red now. Okay. <laughs> so we're ready to uh, lock in. Starboard two. So we've uh, triggered the lever to be able to start the automatic process to lift and the it no longer has an ecclusier it's all automatic try your milk please oh milk <laughs> might have gone off might have done oh i'm just going to avoid this dripping water under this bridge and i've got a uh, junction coming up Bonjour Monsieur Aaron I'm saying eh, qu'est-ce que tu vas <laughs> merde on y va monsieur Mais oui, mais oui. Au revoir. Bonjour, Cana. Bonjour, Cana. Orange, orange. <laughs> okay, so we got a big pinish approaching from behind. So I moved over to the starboard, to the, is it the left bank or the right bank at the moment? Who knows? Bonjour monsieur Un bateau très joli, très grand Grosse bateau Finish is way ahead now. Options floated along, steered well on autopilot, and we were very happy. <laughs> Sneak it up on you. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, I'm in your way. <laughs> Okay, depth restriction. No, not yet. It'd be nice if it was sunny. Gina was glad to make hot drinks and prepare food on the go. No more awkward angles of bouncing up and down to deal with. Nice one. The Borborg meets the river Ar on which we head south. Tranquil. The Liaison Dunkirk Escal is the name for the combined river and canal sections heading south to the Canal du Nord. The maximum authorised draft here is 2.5 metres, so commercial traffic is frequent. So 
push convoy and it's got a blue flag. No, it's not a blue flag. That's not, um, that's not flammable. He's got his mask down. Here comes the next one. We're going to get a bit of wake, Sheena. Forty kilometres later, we moored up for the night at Port de Arc for 15 euros and walked half an hour into the town for provisions. We've been shopping! We've been shopping! <laughs> well, now we look for a born restaurant. A local bistro provided a good dinner that night. I think we slipped easily into the French canal life, but in truth, there was something of great concern preying on my mind and I hadn't yet sorted it. Our time in France for the year was running out, and before the canals closed, we had to find somewhere safe to settle options for winter. Absolutely massive, another boat. 